My dear respected brothers and sisters, after last month's khutbah on mental health and the crisis that I feel even we as a Muslim ummah do find ourselves in, Naswa, it is befitting to follow this up with the khutbah about one of the solutions. And it may sound cliche, but one of the solutions is indeed patience. Now I know patience and the Arabic equivalent of sabr is thrown around a lot. People are saying be patient, be patient, be patient, but what does it mean? Like really to be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Noble Quran, وَلَنَبَّلُوا أَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Stating one of the facts of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we will certainly test you in this life. We will certainly test you in this life with the touch of fear, the touch of famine, loss of property, life, crops, wealth. All of this is part of life and if these tests wouldn't be here, we wouldn't call this dunya from dana, from something that is low, something that is imperfect, we would call it jannah. Because that's the place where these things don't exist. But you see, even in this ayah, which may sound a little bit scary to some, because it speaks about things that we perceive to be negative, although sometimes we don't know they may be turning out positive for us. But even this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a light at the very end, because where I stop is not where the ayah stops. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then concludes this ayah by saying, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give glad tidings to those who endure patiently. Now all these tests, all of them, these are facts of life. They will happen. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ But give glad tidings to those who endure patiently. In fact, if you look throughout the Noble Quran for the word sabr, in its various formations, variations, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned a sabr over 100 times in the Noble Quran. Some have counted it to 103 times. In various forms. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru Oh you who have believed, 
patiently endure. Persevere patiently and start God on God patiently and be mindful of Allah so that you may be successful. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has connected a sabr with his closeness and his love various times in the Quran. When he said, Inna Allah ma'as-sabirin, Allah is with those who are enduring patiently. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin, and Allah loves those who are patient. So what does it mean to be patient? If it is such an important thing, what does it mean to be patient? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had seven children, three boys and four daughters. His last son, his name was Ibrahim. Ibrahim grew up in Medina. In fact, not in the house of the Prophet wasallam predominantly, but as it was the adah, the tradition, he gave or the Prophet wasallam sent his son to another family for various reasons. So he grew up with a blacksmith family who lived close to Uhud. And on one day, the Prophet ﷺ hears disturbing news. News that his son is not doing very well. His son is not doing very well. So he makes his way from the center of al Madina to Uhud to see what is going on with his son. And some of the companions are accom accompanying him and going with him. And one of them goes a little bit faster to tell the blacksmith to stop his work because Rasulullah is approaching. And as they were approaching, the Prophet takes his son Ibrahim. And in that moment, Ibrahim breathed his last breath. Ibrahim passes away in the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shedding a tear. Now Anas ibn Malik is there, Abdurrahman ibn Awf is there, other sahaba are there and Abdurrahman ibn Awf turns to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and saying to him, even you are weeping? Even you are shedding tears? As if he's not saying it, but as if he's saying, look, you taught us the lesson of Qadr Allahu ma shafa'al. You told us the lesson to say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiyun, to be patient and so on and so on and so on. Even you are weeping, Ya Rasulullah, to which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave this profound answer. Isma, listen very carefully. He said, inna al-ayna la tadma' For indeed our eyes are full of tears. Wal-qalba yahzan. And our hearts are filled with sadness, but, and this is the shahid, but we will only say what pleases our Lord and our Master. But indeed, we are addressing his son now. We are, we are indeed grieved by your separation and your departure, O Ibrahim. So the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us a valuable lesson here. A lesson that this kind of sadness, this feeling of huzn, this sadness is a natural thing. You crying and weeping is a natural thing. This is something that is human intrinsics. It happens. But what you need to try to do in that very moment and in similar moments is to hold yourself together. Hold yourself together and do not lose faith. How many brothers are calling me and saying, I had a test and I stopped praying. I had a test and I stopped turning to Allah. I stopped making dua. I stopped making dhikr. In that very moment, that's the moment where no one else can help you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So part of patience here is to be patient, to go through those feelings. I'm not saying hold them together, but go through those feelings, go there, go through them with sabr because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are patient, loves and is close to those who are patient. Don't lose faith at that moment. At that moment you need to find to Allah. Don't go to extremes and shouting and screaming. 
Hold yourself together. In another hadith, we read how the Prophet ﷺ found a woman or standing over the grave of her son. And she just lost. And she was shouting and she was screaming. She was loud. Aloud she was feeling very sad and she was making it public that she was feeling loud and and it was the practice in the pre-islamic jahiliya she was screaming and she was shouting so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam approaching her and telling her ittaqillah wasbiri fear allah be mindful of allah in this moment and have patience and the woman not noticing who is actually approaching her she's very harsh saying to the man she didn't know saying who are you to tell me what I should be doing now you are not in my position and that's another one which we often do comparing at that moment who are you to tell me anything so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he left and he went home but the Sahaba saw what happened radiallahu anhum and once the lady once she calmed down they went to her and she and they said to her didn't you know that this was actually Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who approached you? Didn't you know? And she said, no. So she went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She found this very easy to approach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She entered upon him and she apologized for her harshness. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told her a couple of things, but one of the things that he told her is, As-sabru inda sadmatil ula that real patience is at the first stroke of calamity. The first stroke of calamity. That's where your patience is really tested. Once the accident happens, once the exam, the test happens, in that very moment, that's when you need to hold yourself together and say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. The way the Prophet ﷺ taught us, the way it is mentioned in the Noble Quran, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sabr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us patience us, for us and our families and everyone who we are close to. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa naf'ana wa iyyakum bil ayyati wa dhikri al-Hakim wa qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-Muslimin wa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salam wa ala nabi al mustafa wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa ba'd. My dear respected brothers and sisters, if you look at the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is quite literally no one who was tested with more tests than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I've mentioned that a couple of times on this minute before. Read the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lost six out of his seven children, he lost two of his wives during his lifetime. One of them will be enough for us to be six and two wives. He was expelled of his own country, his own city. He was bullied to extremes. He was threatened for his life. His family was targeted in various ways. He was pelted when he went to Taif. He fought in battles and was injured. He went through tests that we would not want for anyone. But whenever he was at the low, he was looking up because he knows what comes after that is better. What comes after that is better. And he could have done differently because he was offered differently. He was offered to be the king, to be the ruler, to get the wealth, to get everything, just to stop saying, La ilaha illallah. But he didn't. He didn't. He did not so that we can stand here 1,442 years later and say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I will finish with the beautiful ayah. What is the reward 
for those who are patient. قُلْ يَا إِلَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَأَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعًا O Prophet, say, or say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proclaimed, O my servants who believe, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord, those who do good in this world will have a good reward, and Allah's earth is spacious. وَأَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعًا إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجَرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ What is the reward, Ya Allah? Only those who endure patiently, their reward is without any limits. There is no bounds, there is no limits for those who are showing patience. There is no limits. Think about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us patience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant patience and success and tawfiq for our brothers and sisters around the world who are enduring a lot, a lot of tests at the moment. Our brothers and sisters in China, our brothers and sisters in Kashmir, in Afghanistan, in India, in Sri Lanka, in Syria, in Palestine in Yemen, in Sudan, in many, many places. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them in the refugee camps. May Allah help our brothers and sisters, the refugees who are trying to find a better place to live for them and their families and sometimes dying in that moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and our families and all the brothers and sisters and all the Muslims around the world. وَأَكْثِرُ أَيُّهَا الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ وَالسَّلَامِ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَإِنَّ مَنْ صَلَّى عَلَى نَبِيهِ مَرَّةً وَاهِدَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِهَا عَشَرَةً اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد اللهم ارزقنا محبته وإتباعه ظاهرا وباطنا اللهم توفنا على ملته اللهم احشرنا في ظمرته اللهم اسقنا من حمده اللهم ادخلنا في شفاعته اللهم اجمعنا به في جنات النعيم مع الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين اللهم ارض عن خلفائه الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي أفضل أتباع المرسلين اللهم ارض عن الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم ارض عنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا رب العالمين اللهم اصلح ولاة أمور المسلمين اللهم ولي علينا خيارنا ولا تولي علينا شرعنا اللهم فرج عن المذمومين وعلمانا في السجون يا رب العالمين اللهم اصلح المسلمين جميع ذكورهم وإناثهم كبارهم وصغارهم يا رب العالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم جليل يذكركم مشكروه على أن يميزكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسلعون في المسلم يا حامل القرآن قد خصك الرحمن بالفضل والتيجان والروح والريحان يا حامل القرآن قد خصك الرحمن بالفضل والتيجان